Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. Today we're gonna to talk about function partials. You may be asking, why am I wearing these goggles? Will they protect me from my hands blast the laser? <laughs> Programming, gaming, fitness, Jesse Warden. Function partials are there to help in functional programming when you have a bunch of pure functions that declare their dependencies. So for example, this get time function right here calls a web service, a time URL, which has my special key in there, and it gets the time back in JSON. So if you run it, you can see that it makes a web service call and comes back with this JSON, and the time is what we want right there. It's JSON string. The problem with this function is that it uses this via closure and uses this parameter, this time URL, kind of hard-coded in it. The biggest issue isn't necessarily the time URL, but rather the actual request. This is not a pure function because every time you call it, you could get a completely different request very value back that's outside of it, right? So it's impure from that perspective. And it's IO. If the internet goes down, we don't know. And the worst part of all, this function doesn't return anything. The way you fix that in functional programming is you actually define its dependencies. In this case, request and time URL. So now, when we change request module to be a little more specific as to what it is, because in unit test, you could actually mock that or fake that. And then same with time URL. Now this function takes the same inputs and will always, quote unquote, give the same outputs, except there is no output. So let's go ahead and give an output. We'll change this to a promise to make this a little bit more easy to return things, because a promise says, I promise to respond with a success or failure at some point in the future. And we'll get rid of all this nastiness, and we'll just say, look, if you have an error, then go ahead and call the failure with the error. Otherwise, call the success with a body. And we'll close it up. And now you have a pure function that actually returns a promise. So we can see that this result here, we'll log out the result, is a promise. And it should say pending. And then we can actually unroll it or unwind it. Dot then with the result JSON. Results, which is technically the body, and the catch, just in case it blows up, we'll say error. And this has happened in my demos a few times because this web service is very flaky. So now when we run it, we'll see that we have a pure function that defines its dependencies, but we didn't actually supply them, so we get a runtime error. And what that means is that we actually have to supply those actual dependencies. So pure function is cool in that we can now supply those things, request, and go ahead and use the same time URL that I imported up here. So when we rerun it, it now works, but now every time that we get this promise back and then we unwind it, we have to supply those. And that's kind of very tiresome and ridiculous. So what we can do is create a function partial. If you look up here with this lodash partial function that I've imported from lodash, you can use it from Folktale, it doesn't matter. We're gonna go ahead and pre-fill this because we wanna call get time all over the place and not have to supply this request each time. Get time partial. And it's a partial function, which means that we want to take this get time function and we want to pre-fill with an array of arguments. The array of arguments that we care about is this one right here, which we already know is the request, and the time URL, which you already have imported. So the, the only difference between this function and this function is that the get time, we actually have to fill out those arguments, right? It's a pure function. Where the partial, we don't have to do that. So I'm simply going to replace it, call it with no arguments, save, rerun the code, and you'll notice it does the exact same thing. It gives you a promise back and gives you results. So the good news is we've pre-filled that. Think of a partial function as a function that already has its arguments in there. It's ready to go. And another way to look at it would be if we rewrote the same function old school style, it would be a function, right, that calls get time, right, with the request and the time URL already supplied. When we get this function back right here, we can then invoke it, right, and it already has the argument supplied. So this and this are very, very similar. From a pure function perspective, the unit testing makes this easy because partial is a third-party library, already unit tested by the Lodash creator, and we can unit test this very simple because we don't need to mock anything. We can simply put a really simple stub that has a get function, and so it makes it really, really easy to test these things. That's the basics of partial functions. You create a pure function that requires its dependencies to be shown, and then you create a partial wrapper around it that already applies those arguments to it, so you can reuse it. Now, we'll see how this is useful when we start dry-fine code or reusing it with multiple web services later.